So in today's video, I'll talk about my Raspberry Pi powered precision movement stage. If you're wondering how I filmed some of my other videos that show close-ups of microchips, this is how I did it. So my original eventual goal was to get it working with all four axes, and it took me a while to prototype all the parts. So I had to buy the parts bit by bit from China and wait the three months for each of them to arrive. So the system is using an L298N motor driver, a stepper motor with a phase resistance of 40 ohms, and the stepper motor is controlled by an Arduino, and the Arduino is controlled by a Raspberry Pi. On the top here, I have an optical rotation stage. That was the most expensive part of this setup. That was, I think, uh, 180 bucks. And the optical rotation stage is connected to the motor via some gears and pulleys. And you might think this is a lot of work just to rotate something around in circles. And there is an alternative. You can buy these jewelry display rotation stages, but unfortunately these things rotate way too fast. And if you do any kind of close-up video on them, it's basically unusable. And you might ask why would you attach the Raspberry Pi to the Arduino instead of just directly controlling motors from the Raspberry Pi. So my goal with doing that was to try and keep the design a bit modular. I actually have three other Arduinos here that are ready to go, and the eventual goal would be to connect those other three Arduinos to separate motors, so that way I can have full XYZ and rotation control. But I just haven't quite got there yet. So the way I have it set up, I can wirelessly SSH into the Raspberry Pi, and the Raspberry Pi sends messages to the Arduinos. And I have some custom firmware on the Arduino that responds to do commands to uh, start up the motor and change the speed and all sorts of stuff. Now I have the whole setup mounted on uh, 3 eighths of an inch thick steel plate, and I did that to keep it really still and rigid. One of the big problems with trying to create videos of microchips is there's just so much vibration. If someone flushes the toilet upstairs, it'll actually cause noticeable vibrations on the screen. Another important thing about the rotation stage is this is a continuous 360 degree rotation stage. And if you're looking to buy one, you have to make sure you get the right one. Some of these will only do plus or minus 5 degrees, so they don't go all the way around in a circle. My original plan was to fully complete this project, and then I was going to do a full bill of materials and maybe some tutorials on it, but I just haven't quite got there yet. One of the most important things I learned from this project was the importance of sizing motor drivers and motors. So by chance, the first motor that I bought was a 40 ohm phase resistance. And then I bought more that I thought were the same, and, but it turns out they were actually 4 ohm. And if you do your V equals IR, you'll note that that will consume a lot more current. And more current means a lot more heat. And more heat means a tiny heat sink like this will not dissipate the heat fast enough. Now you can fix that by spending a lot more money on a much larger motor driver, but if you just size the motor correctly, you don't have that problem. And in my case, I actually bought the same motor three times off of eBay because the vendor was mislabeling it. There was a few different listings where they would say it was a 40 ohm phase resistance. Then I'd buy it and actually measure it. And in one case, I actually sent the vendor a picture with the uh, measurement on the multimeter and the vendor just said, oh, it's the same thing. So even though I bought the first motor off of eBay, I ended up needing to find a rest on Amazon in order to get that 40 ohm phase resistance. Another reason to go with lower current as well is it means less power and less vibration. It also took a lot of trial and error to get the gears, the shafts, and the belts figured out as well. The challenge was really just about finding the right part off of eBay that was uh, cheap and available. So these belts, I think I paid, you know, like a dollar, maybe a few cents even for them. Each of these gears is no more than like a couple dollars. And I had to come up with some solution to make this adjustable. So I, uh, so I found this thing, which is called a phalange. And here I just repurposed a NEMA 17 bracket. Okay, now let's take a look at what this looks like when you're actually using it. Okay, here's a look at this thing in action. Okay, and here's an example of what the final setup looks like. And as you can see, that's very shaky. I usually put it on the floor on a mat, and that makes it a lot more stable. And as you can see, I can uh, use the fine adjustments on the movement stage. All right, that's all I have time for today. If you hated this project, make sure to dislike this video and unsubscribe.